Hey guys, Teresa Barber here with Sippy Couture and I am so excited to share this um, pack of sticky sheets with you guys. These are from Mr. Nola's Glitter and they're a tortoise shell sticky sheet set. I'm, um, like I said, I'm so excited. There's so many animal prints that are just so pretty and I feel like tortoise is, it's, um, it's one of those, uh, it's kind of been untouched, you know, untouchable for a while. I'm not saying go out and go get yourself um, a turtle shell. Please do not do that. Um, but it's been one of those designs that have just been untouchable. So to have a print that I can work with, um, I'm really, really excited about. This one has got to be my favorite. I do have a plan for this beauty also, but today we're going to be working with this one. So these are sticky sheets. Uh, they operate just like a giant sticker. You can trim them down to size, use it as a full wrap, whatever you want to do. The, um, uh, they're amazing. Guys, they're amazing. I'm excited. So what I've uh, decided to do for today is to do kind of a few different colors on a, a tumbler. I'm going to use one of these uh, sticky sheets. I have a half one right here. And I'm going to cut this down to the size I want. And I'm going to be pairing it with Royal Sinesta from Mr. Nola's Glitter. Uh, Chocolate City and Chocolate City Junior. I'm not quite sure which one I want to use yet. I know I want all of my glitters to be different uh, sizes and uh, to kind of give a look of different textures and stuff to it. So I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be using Chocolate City or Chocolate City Junior. Um, I'm going to probably decide that when I get there. I'm thinking I'm going to lay Chocolate City and then maybe a little filler with Chocolate City Junior. So we'll see how that plays out whenever I get that color on there. And I have this mix of golds that I put together that um, is my favorite, favorite gold mix to use right now. Uh, there's gold mine in it, some Cardella, a little bit of Esplanade, and I just love it. Um, I, I don't know, it has a really pretty effect. So we're going to get this on here. We're gonna measure out our sections. And I'm one of those people that measure out by um, stacking random stuff. So <laughs> we're gonna stack some random things. I have my sizes together of what I'm gonna use. Um, and we are going to get right to it. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Okay. I have a 30 ounce skinny prep skinny tumbler from uh, Mr. Nola's Glitter. I mean, it's from, geez, not Mr. Nola's Glitter. <laughs> they do have some of these in stock if you're ever in the area and want to pick them up, but these are hog tumblers. Um, and these are the uh, sizes I'm going to be using. I have um, a little, if you want to know the size, I have a bucket of Cajun Sparkle from um, Mr. Nola's Glitter. I'm going to use that as my bottom line. Just take my pencil and run it along. So you can see just a straight line right there. And um, I think this color right here is gonna be brown. I really want my heavier colors to be towards the bottom. Um, that way it doesn't, I don't know, I kind of feel like they look top heavy sometimes um, if you do other colors at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do that brown. This is gonna be where I put my, uh, my sticky sheet. I really want a bigger piece of sticky sheet through here. So we're gonna give this a good spot. It's definitely gonna be wider than the other spots, noticeably wider than the other spots. And nothing special has to happen here. I'm just um, getting the lines the way I want it. So these two are the same size, which means my next glitter size will be the same, which I'm fine with. I'm thinking there's gonna be gold. I think that gold would look so pretty right against the um, that sticky sheet. And the top will be ivory. Um, this ivory. I'm guessing we're calling it ivory. I always feel like it has such a pretty ivory look to it. It's going to be Royal Sinesta. And we're going to uh, mark off our spots now. I always give base paint. Um, when I'm doing these, I like to base coat my glitter in a certain color. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking as I'm doing this. So we're going to work on this together. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do this, guys, to be honest. But we're going to do sections at a time, and we're going to work out, uh, work out them as we come along. Okay, sorry about that. I had my kids um, home for summer, and um, I was hearing one of them. Wanted to make sure he didn't come running in screaming. So we're going to set that aside. And I um, usually work this out quietly in my head. So... Um, if this is a bit awkward for you guys, I'm sorry. This is the size that I'm using for that piece right here. I'm going to make sure that's correct. There's a little line along that side. So there. It's 
right here. And right now I'm just making sure that it's gonna lay flat right there and I know what size I want to trim this down to. That's about right. We're gonna have some striping on here, so if this size is a little off, that's okay. Have my little cutter. I'm gonna line it up with that. had this piece of uh, sticky sheet laying out for a minute, um, a few days trying to decide what to do and how, what colors I wanted to use. So it has a little bit of um, a little bit of, I uh, can't even think today, man, of mica from a cup I was doing. All right, so we're gonna lay this piece down first. And then overlap them so I can clean that part off. Where is my rubbing alcohol? There we go. Probably would help if I don't grab. All right, we're gonna get this on. These sticky sheets are so, so easy to work with. You can reposition them. Probably should have my little tool over here and I don't. Just wraps around perfect, I love it. All right, I'm gonna trim this piece off. Let me take a look, see how that seam is. Does it blend? It kind of goes together. Let's see. If you've watched any of my videos, you always hear me say that I hate having a seam along the back of my tumbler, and that is still the case, but. isn't quite much of a choice here. I'll trim this off to make it kind of even out. This is actually made my first time making a tumbler with different sections. So <laughs> if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing for a second, it's because I do not. I'm gonna kind of figure this out together. Um, I guess the good thing about that is you can see kind of the troubleshoot process. Let me see if this has any stretch to it because I cut it slightly shorter than I should have. does. All right. I had it just a tad tighter than it should have in one section, but that actually worked really, really great to tighten it up. Let me get my little scraper. I'm really excited about this one. It's gonna be so pretty. 
feel like I always say it's, come, it's gonna come out so pretty then in my head I'm like oh god does it <laughs> did it come out exactly the way I had hoped yeah I like that that isn't I mean there's a little bit of a seam right there but um, it will be fine I'm gonna tell myself it will be fine all right and now I want to tape this off because I want to spray paint I like having a really good base so we're gonna spray paint brown gold leave that white um, but I really, really want it to be a clean look. So, um, let me go. I don't want tape all over this. Let me go get a piece of saran wrap. Okay, so my plan is to cover, um, I never quite am comfortable with putting tape over vinyl. And I'm never quite comfortable if it's going to pull up some of my color or not. So, I always tape it just to be safe. Um, I put saran wrap down to protect my paint that I have in that section. And then I use electrical tape to get a really, really close um, edge to it. This electrical tape is super, super flexible so you can really play around with getting it to line up right on your tumbler. This is another time that I'm not quite used to um, not working with something sitting on my lap, so. Another first. Have my saran wrap down to protect the white. And um, I know there's other ways this could be done, but how I'm used to it. And I am just realizing that the camera is, um, this angle's probably not right, so <laughs> give me a second, guys. Sorry. Hope that doesn't mess up. Hope that doesn't mess it up on your end. I'm really sorry about that go. I was wondering why it, uh, I felt like I had a tighter spot to work in. All right. Um, that was one time that my spray paint ate through my saran wrap. Um, and I don't know why or how, but I want to make sure that doesn't happen again. taping these sections off so we can come in with our spray paint that needs to be black and gold. This is just the way I do things, guys. If you have a different way you want to do this, um, go ahead. don't think this electrical tape will mess up the sticky sheet but I haven't tried I haven't tried putting tape on a sticky sheet before and I don't want to I don't want to find out right now while I'm right here, uh, thank you guys for watching. I know that there's a lot of people making tumblers um, and a lot of tutorials out there. So uh, thanks for taking a minute to see um, <laughs> what I'm trying to figure out. I love using electrical tape for this stuff. So will that fit? Yes. 
just enough to make sure if there's any spots in my um, saran wrap that have gaps, um, I'm putting this painter's tape down just in case that saran wrap has ripped in it or something I'm unsure of. I don't have a problem where uh, that spray paint is going to get on that sticky sheet. All right, so I'm gonna put a sponge in this. I use high density foam. You can get it from Joann's Fabric and then I just cut it down to size. Um, and then you just cut a hole in the middle and that's what I use for all of my tumblers. All right, we'll get this outside with some black and gold and get these two sections painted. Sorry, and get these two sections painted. Okay, it seems as though my brown, uh, my good brown spray paint is missing, so we're using nutmeg. Uh, we just want a good base so that that brown shows a little more true brown. Um, sometimes when you put dark glitter over a light surface, um, you don't get that good of coverage, and you might need a second coat. Doing this will um, help you, it'll kind of prevent you from needing that second coat. The paint did something funky right there, so we'll let it dry and then give it another uh, light coat. We have these two painted. We're going to set them in the sun, let them dry, and then go back with a second coat just to touch up some of the areas where the brown didn't want to cooperate on that paint. We are applying this glitter epoxy method, so we don't need a lot of epoxy here. It's just enough to get the glitter to stick. So we're going to get it on, and then we'll use our heat gun to help thin it and spread it out. If you put too much, um, I'll show you this. If you put too much epoxy, you can leave streaks in your epoxy and the glitter will show through the streaks. So if you ever have a glitter application with epoxy method and it looks like your epoxy, your glitter felt streaky, it's because you had streaks in, in the epoxy. And I'll show you um, how to kind of avoid that. Get my heat gun and then we'll smooth out this epoxy. We're leaving this tape on. We don't want to pull this tape up yet because it's kind of protecting those other sections from getting this glitter on it. And to clarify, I said that I haven't done like a tumbler before with different sections. I meant like this style, like um, vertically, you know, with lines going across. I've done V split tumblers and like just regular split tumblers, but not one where the color, you know, different colors laying down in sections. So I'm kind of excited. But oh, besides the pencil tumbler, I think we've all done those. I think we're all tired of doing those. All right, so I have a lot of epoxy down. Like I said, not to. <laughs> but this will help me show you guys what I mean about those streaks. So you see how they have streaks in the epoxy right now? If I were to drop glitter on top of that, you would see those streaks. Um, it would be very, very noticeable through your glitter, especially if you're using a fine glitter. If you have a chunky glitter, it won't matter all that much, but if you have a fine glitter, you're gonna see all those lines. Um, and it's just not pretty. In my opinion, it's not pretty. So what I do, the times I do get streaks is I take my glove and I flatten my palm out and I press down over it to give it kind of like this textured type look to it. Uh, what that will do is as your epoxy evens out, those little textury dots will even out a lot easier than big old streaks. Like, can you see how it took those streaks away and now it's just that textured type look? If you still have too much epoxy and you still have that really uh, texture type look right there, then wait even longer if you want. Um, wait a little bit longer, go back again with the palm of your hand and flatten it down again and that will help to still get out some of those uh, ripples. We'll do it one more time because I do see a few that I don't like. And then we'll bring our uh, heat gun into play to kind of help smooth it out. I 
And then I also realized that when I said about grabbing the spray paint, um, before I did the spray paint, I said black and gold. Um, I meant brown. All right. Got a little of the heat gun on it just to help work out some of that. And we'll drop down our glitter. That ivory I'm going to use is really close to the cut of this Chocolate City Junior, so I'm definitely going to mix the two. We're gonna get this gold down first. The good thing about this little gold mix that I put together is that it does have some chunky parts in it, but it also has some fine glitters in there that kind of fill in those gaps. Knock what I can off because I don't want to contaminate that brown when I go to do it. Take my parchment paper and lay down those little bits. If you have too much epoxy and you're laying down your glitter with parchment paper, there may be some times where you lift up some of that glitter. It will, you know, the epoxy that soaked up the glitter will stick to the parchment paper and you could lift off that little bit of glitter. If that happens, just lay down a little more glitter on top. Um, it didn't happen, but I will show you what I'm talking about. You could just lay more glitter down on top and then lay that down again. That would cover up um, any issues. It's also good to just do this to make sure that you have all those little gaps filled in. Knock all that off. so that we're not fighting with it later when it's time to um, get the layers of epoxy on. And time for our brown. We're gonna go at Chocolate City first. Get a good coat of this on here. And depending on how it looks, we may fill in with Chocolate City Junior. Um, we're gonna get this down first, lay it down, and then kind of decide by looking at it. If I can see any of that lighter brown paint in the background, then we'll get some down. If it looks like it kind of did its job, then I won't worry about it. Put a little extra glitter on here because I'm not quite sure how thick that was and how much it wants to soak up. So I'm gonna put a good bit, give it a minute to do its thing. Grab a new piece of parchment paper. The good thing about using parchment paper for this is that you can let it, um, like whenever you do this with the glitter and there's epoxy and glitter and everything on there, um, you don't have to waste this parchment paper. If you let it sit until that epoxy that's on the paper cures, then you could just knock it all off and keep reusing the same sheets of, um, of parchment paper. I 
have been doing that for a bit with a few sheets and I just cleaned my whole room the other day and threw all that out. So there are no clean sheets for me to use. All right, I'm gonna go on with one other coat because I can kind of tell how some of it is soaking in a little different than uh, areas that may not have had as much epoxy on there. So we'll give another coat. Uh, one of the things that's pretty exciting about this, uh, this tumbler for me is that I've been really wanting to do something with tortoiseshells for a while and I haven't been able to find exactly what I wanted from that. And when uh, Rachel started doing some of the sticky sheets, she was asking for suggestions. And I was like, oh, tortoise, please. <laughs> please, I have some ideas and I can't find what I want and my printer is just not friendly. And um, she was so, so awesome enough to say, yeah, let's, um, let's get some things together. And I um, got the pretty awesome opportunity to name it. So I'm with Tortuga Bay. I felt like that was a pretty fun name for it. So if you're looking for the tortoiseshell sticky sheet, it is on the website at mrnolasglitter.com under Tortuga Bay. All right, make sure this is all laid down. We're gonna let this go around for a bit and cure, and then we're gonna take it outside and hit it with some clear matte spray paint. The reason why I'm doing clear matte spray paint is that I wanna drop that white glitter next, um, that ivory glitter, uh, what are we doing, Royal Sinesta. I wanna drop that next, and it's gonna be easier to kind of wipe out of here if it does spill over a little, if this has a matte spray paint on it, because we're able to just dust it off. So let this go for a little bit, and uh, we'll be back with uh, the clear. Okay, so I brought this outside super quick and gave it just a um, few quick mist of Rust-Oleum matte spray paint, just a clear spray paint. Uh, the reason why I did matte instead of gloss is that whenever I put down Royal Sinesta, um, if it's easier to wipe off of matte spray paint. Not quite sure how to word that, but it wipes off of matte spray paint um, a lot easier than it does the uh, the gloss. So we went ahead and did that. I'm going to wait for this. I don't want to chase this around. I want it to be kind of an easier way to peel off. And this is how I remove the tape whenever I have um, some epoxy down. I use the heat gun to help loosen up just a little of, um, of that tape on there, of the epoxy. It'll kind of soften it a little and I'll be able to move it without really doing a ton of damage. Um, a little tougher since I'm stuck inside. There we go. It's a little stuck to that. Um, plastic wrap. All right, we're going to wait for this other part to come around. And we want to pull it the direction that um, the same way it's turning, it just makes it easier. So we'll do the same thing. We've got to get this started. I'm going to use my heat gun again to kind of help loosen up, um, not really loosen the epoxy, but get it a little easier to pull away. I feel like when it's warmer, it softens the epoxy a little and you're able to take this away with a cleaner line uh, rather than, you know, really ripping it across. All right, get all of that off. When I put that sponge on, it kind of got stuck with the plastic wrap, so I'll have to work for a minute and get that, make sure that's all off. And then we are also going to remove some of the bottom uh, tape right here. Let's go first with this. And then 
then we'll go back this other way. Just take our time, do one side at a, at a time. Now this brown. We'll do the same thing so we have where that epoxy is kind of set up a little. go oh I love it already oh I'm excited how fun I'm super super excited and that's gonna have a strip around there some um, some you know vinyl strips so that will all be a really really clean look once that's down all right we will work to get to be more epoxy mixed up to do this top part all right I have a very little bit of epoxy mixed up and we don't want a lot of this one either um, at all. So we'll get a little bit on and go around. Probably would have had better luck to tape up this part, but um, being that there's so many layers, uh, you know, different sections, I didn't want to have such a fight with the epoxy and getting it straight. Because what I would normally do when I do like the V-split tumblers is I, I'll get a section down I'll get the glitter down and then I'll epoxy it. And then I'll do the next section and then I'll epoxy that. That way the glitter doesn't travel into the other sections, but um, I didn't quite, oh, I didn't realize that purple spot. Oh no, oh well. Um, but I didn't, I want it to be a lot less of a fight to try to get those spots even when it's time. So we're going to carefully pull this down against that line. Kind of warm it up to have it a little easier to work with. We'll drag our hand just before it touches that gold. And then I may actually get a tool, a little paintbrush to help work it in there. Let's do that. And I usually use cheap paintbrushes, so it's okay if I end up ruining this one. I'm going to go through and pick out the gold that's in here that's kind of traveled a little. Push this epoxy down, make sure I have a bit in there. away some of this get out I didn't even notice that pink spot on there I think I saw it earlier and kind of thought my head I needed to fix it but completely forgot to okay so I'm gonna do the same thing when I use the palm of my hand and help to just flatten that out a bit. Just gonna be really, really careful that I don't bring the palm of my hand into the gold because I don't want this glitter to stick in there. I'll probably take it off the turner. I usually epoxy while everything's on the turner, like lay my glitter, but I might actually take it off for this part just to be a little more safe. Like I said, I usually tape it up, but 
um, every once in a while when I do, I feel like I have to go through and really work to smooth out the epoxy to get my vinyl strips in a nice, pretty, clean line. And I didn't want to have to fight with it between four different layers. Get that line to smooth out. I really hope that peach spot doesn't show through this glitter. Man, I don't like that. Uh, is there a way I can fix that real quick? Let me see. Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing right now, guys. I know I don't wanna, um, I wanna be extra careful and I don't wanna drop that over it. the top of my alcohol ink. Hmm. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that was, that was great. Okay, cool. So, um, I was, my thought was to put, wow, that worked. Uh, my thought was to put a dab of um, white alcohol ink over that to kind of mask it, like paint it kind of. Uh, but with the hope so that working some of this epoxy into it uh, would still keep it tacky where my glitter would stick to that section. And instead, the alcohol kind of combined and took off, kind of took off the pink. All right, well, that was unexpected. Y'all look, I'm sorry, I promise I, <laughs> I promise I know what I'm doing half the time. Um, that's, that's crazy. I'm very, very excited that worked. And absolutely hate the fact that I grabbed a blue napkin for that. Okay, well this part that should have been super easy and quick is now taking a bit longer than planned, but uh, that is how you fix that problem. <laughs> All right, now let's go on. You know what? I have a different idea. No, I don't have a different idea. I do in a minute. Okay, we're going to carefully how much room do I have in the camera range right here? Okay, carefully drop it along that line. Clear that out first, make sure it's gonna kind of fall the way I want. Carefully drop it along that line. I've tried using this, um, Royal Sinesta over an off-white eggshell ivory type base and it kind of made it a little darker than I like. I like the way the white pulls it a bit brighter so I'm gonna stick to just over white. Kind of just gently pouring it close to that line and letting it kind of uh, vibrate to the point where it gets on that line, if that makes sense. Probably should have strained this out a little because I use it a lot with rose gold and I can see a little, a few little fakes, a flakes of like bougie in here. And if you don't know what bougie is, uh, bougie is a rose gold mix that they have over at Nola's Glitter that is so, so pretty with this. Um, ivory color. All right. Then I'm going to get my knife. 
pick out a few of these parts. Y'all look, I'm telling you. Not quite as planned with this part right here. Yeah, I definitely probably should have strained that out a little. Look how pretty that is though. I really love this color. drop it close to the line just in case and I'm gonna not talk for a minute because this stuff is so thin I don't want it to fly too much on me excited because it'll be so pretty now I get to pick out vinyls yeah, I can do stripes um, for the vinyl stripes that I want I don't know I like the way that brown looks but I'm gonna take a look and see um, what other really pretty color vinyls we have it'd be great if I had some vinyls that have like a bit of uh, different color to it you know like a metallic look or a, um, like a big contrast look so I want like a mirror gold or um, I'm definitely not going to do my pearl white that I love, but definitely some colors that are um, that are really, really pretty and fun to work with. So we'll let this spin all the way. We're going to let this completely set and then we will go through with our um, spray paint again, some clear spray paint. It can be matte or gloss, doesn't quite matter. Um, and what we're going to do is make sure that all of this is set in place. That way when we get our epoxy and we go to coat this with our first layer of epoxy, none of those glitters move around on us. We want this to stay exactly how it is. So let this cure all the way and then we'll go on with that. We're getting this first coat of speed dry on here. I did take this outside and I sealed it with just a clear spray paint. Um, and it doesn't matter if you use clear or matte for that. So I just grabbed whichever one was closest and I sealed it really good just to make sure that this is not going to spread around on me, that it's really going to stay still um, and I won't have to worry about you know the glitter traveling if you are worried about that then what I would suggest is do it look some of these gold pieces are even coming up I guess I didn't spray it enough um, go ahead and do this part first this uh, the print first that way you don't have to worry about you know kind of dirtying up that print I went through and set a few cups. And I probably should have done this one first, but I didn't want to have to like rush with this video to get this um, speed dry on the other cups. So hopefully I have enough. Put this on here. I have a few pieces that did travel, so I will go through, smooth all this out, and then um, just kind of pick out the pieces that did move away on me. I sprayed it, but I didn't want to go too crazy. Obviously, I didn't spray it enough. We're going to pick up the pieces that don't belong. And then I'm going to get my torch. And y'all are going to um, laugh at me for a minute. My torch is 
seriously dying. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's dead. I have to use a, um, a lighter to light my torch. Usually my husband is close enough where he will help me out with this. Yay, he did it. I was gonna say, he is outside. All right, we're gonna hit this with the torch. Just make sure we don't have any bubbles. Usually working the epoxy out, it gets all the bubbles out, just kind of smoothing it. Does it does really good to lift those bubbles out of there. But we're gonna use this just in case. After this coat, we are going to clean up the bottom, clean up the top, and then do another coat on it. We're gonna want this to be as smooth as possible before we put the vinyl strips down. Um, like we'll, some finishing tape is what we'll be using. Finishing tape and vinyl. We want it to really be a smooth surface before that goes on. And the reason is that if you put that tape down, um, because we wanna help it cover the seams, if you put that down kind of rough against the seams, you'll see, uh, you'll see the seams through that tape. And we really don't want that. I want everything to be a really smooth, perfect, pretty finish. Uh, so we'll let this go for a little bit and then um, I will show you how I trim down the top with the cup edging tool. Sorry, trim the bottom with the cup edging tool. My speed dry is mixed up and we're going to get this right onto here. So the cleanup that we did on the bottom of the tumbler, that's like I said, what the um, end result is for that. That's how that bottom will look. So from here on, we're just going to be kind of maintaining that. So any epoxy that drips over the edge will get um, our a napkin or whatever you have with some rubbing alcohol and just clean it up. That way you won't have to do a ton of cleanup later. At this point, moving forward, once I get decals on there, every layer of epoxy that I do, I put it on as if it's my last layer. Because if it happens to go on perfect and everything's covered, that will be my last layer. And I won't have to go back and, um, and do another one. I feel like every once in a while I, I will put a layer on thinking that's my, um, thinking I will need another layer and it falls just so perfect. Like the epoxy will cover the whole decal, everything is great. And then I realize like I didn't clean the bottom of my tumbler and um, you know, some paint will be stuck under it and then it's, it isn't. <laughs> and then I'll have to um, clean it off and then do another coat. So from here, everything we make sure is, uh, is really cleaned up nice. So I have my alcohol and I have my baby wipe for whatever went around the edge. If it went a little too much, I'm just gonna run this around in a circle, clean it up, and then you can hit it with your heat gun just to soften that epoxy and help it lay right back down again. And that's it. This epoxy is so great with the bubbles. Um, I don't see any bubbles in it right now, so I'm not gonna worry about the torch. Uh, if you do see bubbles and take your torch right now, and um, hit, hit it and get the rest of those bubbles out. But let this cure for a few hours, then we get to do our striping that I'm very, very excited about. It's time to get these strips of vinyl on. I went ahead and took this um, outside real quick and I sanded it down. Um, it didn't have any bumps, but I do find that sometimes when I sand it first, I get, um, I don't know, I feel like some of my vinyl grabs better. So um, I went ahead and sanded it just super light. Also, I cleaned out the inside of the tumbler just with acetone and um, what I use, a magic eraser, um, like that magic eraser sheet. I use that just to uh, make sure all that spray paint is out. It, uh, it does really good for helping. All right, so for the vinyl strips, what I'm using is I have this brown and I'm, I'll find out the color for you guys. I believe it's for from 143 Vinyl and there's a few different ones that's called Luster Matte Metallic. And I believe that's what this is. Um, I will definitely list that for sure in the descriptions because this is so pretty. They have so many colors of this. Um, I did a peekaboo power wash and um, this was a pink that, this is not pink, this is brown, but the pink is what I used um, of this little collection that they had. Um, it's just, it's so pretty. It looks so pretty under epoxy. So I'm excited to see what that would look like. As far as these strips, the thickness, um, I will do math and figure out what that is, but this is how I do my strips. I don't run my paper through my Cricut. Um, I just, I don't know, my brain doesn't quite work on translating those numbers. So what I do is um, I have my piece of vinyl. I put it in my little paper edger. I line it up to where I want it. And for these, I went um, just before, like there's a 
clear spot and then the measurement starts kind of like right here and I brought it right up to where that line is and I um, I eyeballed it to make sure it was straight then I put that piece down I put that piece down and then you just slide it and it cuts out the size strip that you want um, so I did that a few different times <clears throat> sorry a few different times to get the size that I wanted with this brown and I was really, really hoping for like a cream color to put on here and I couldn't find one. So what I did was I took my sticky sheet and I trimmed out a few of these, um, just a few strips, same thing, super, super thin on there. And like I said, I'll get those measurements out to you guys. For the gold, cause I really do feel like it, I want gold on this. Mr. Nola's glitter has finishing tape. This stuff is so cool guys. Let me stop that from rolling around. It's finishing tape. This one is called Sandy Shores, and each color comes in three different sizes. It has, um, and it's not marked on here what the size is, but I'm using the smaller of the three. And if you can see how small this last one is, it is so thin. It's so, so thin. Like, there's no way I can cut anything that thin, um, definitely by hand or with that machine. So I'm pretty happy to use this. Also... They have these little tape dispensers that we can use for these. And I have not used this finishing tape before, guys, so this will be our first time trying to figure this one out as well. But that can go, does this, how's this open? There we go, that was easy. All right, so it will go right in here. Let's see. It's so thin. Get it started first, maybe. There we go. Oh, it fits perfect. That's easy. Does it rip? Does it tear off on its own, or do we have to cut it? Um, I don't know. It doesn't have a little razor there, so we might have to cut it. Okay. So we'll have this line right here. I definitely want the thinner, and we're gonna lay out this. Um, these lines. I build them off the cup. That way I can get a bit better. Um, I know it's lined up really, really straight. So this is how I layer these in between. After I set that coat of epoxy yesterday, I actually ran to Mr. Nola's glitter because they're not far from me. They're um, maybe 40 minutes or so. So I ran over there and got the finishing tape that I needed because um, I was I was looking online. I couldn't quite figure out what I wanted it to be. So I ran over there and also got a sticky mat. Um, mine was so bad. So kind of excited to have a good one again. All right, so we're going to build this right on here. I'm lining it up. Oh, let's go on top of that line so I can see it. Make sure it's straight. All right, and then we're gonna go on with one of these pieces. I wanna go super thin. All three of these are cut in different sizes. Like even this is thinner than, sorry, even the gold is thinner than this. All right, let's see if I can do this. Want a little, like a tad, Little, little, little bit of brown showing at the bottom. Ooh, this pulls up, this sticky sheet pulls up off this vinyl very, very easily. So like you see how right there, how it's not completely straight? It lifts up so easily without messing it up. That's good to know.
So it's not lined up perfect as far as the length, how it overlaps, but this does get trimmed off. So I'm not worried about that. All right, let's see about this. Oh my God, it's so thin. Love it. Oh, that's easy. Oh, that's really easy. I see. Okay. Wow, okay. I really like this stuff. And up a little right there. Sorry for the um, noise, the saw in the background. My husband is out some, cutting up some wood. I feel like I'm even on the top, but it goes up. I think my, this is laying down good. It's the, um, that's perfect. This goes high right here. There's that. There we go. One built. We have one down. We're going to do our next ones. Let me see how that's going to look. Oh, I like that. Oh my goodness. I really like that. Yay. How would it look if I, oh no, that gold would be too, too close to the bottom. That's not bad either. Hmm. I kind of like I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna do it this way because I like the pattern being further away from this. So we'll do that. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's get it on. I should just build them all first, but I wanna see how this looks. So we're going to do this. You want to guess that I cut my nails again the night before last <laughs> or yesterday or whenever it was. I like um, putting this down, you know, layering these off of the cup first because I feel like, let me turn this around. I don't want to get it all nasty. Um, I get it better. It's thicker like this. Whenever you're laying these lines, if you layer it first, since it has a few layers, it has like a little more stability to it. And I feel like it's easier to work with. Where's the, the back? I want to make sure my seams are on the same side. I'll go about right here. I'm 
going just above the gold glitter. I like, I really like the thickness of that gold section, so I don't want to take anything away from it. Come on. There's my razor. And trim that down right here. I trim a little bit over the line. Trim it a little long. That way you don't have a gap. I'd rather have it be just a tad long than have a gap in it, and then I can work that down. Where is these um, little finishing tapes come with this little smoother thing? So let's give that a try. I love it. I love it. Okay, so here's a little trick. Whenever you're lining up um, these edges on the back, and if it overlaps, like um, if it's slightly uneven, a good way to play that off is just trim it, like trim off the top where it's uneven and you'll get like a tiny little triangle of it out of it and then it will look even. I'm gonna trim this back just a tad more. Love it. Oh my goodness. I just love the way that looks. That's going to finish off so pretty. Follow that line so it's like perfectly straight. All right, so we're going to do this next piece. We're going to go through and build all these and get them on the cup. Um, probably nothing for me to say here, so I'll fast forward so you don't have to um, sit here forever watching me <laughs> line up vinyls. I love it. So what I did is that I um, intentionally put the other strips, um, and you saw me kind of flipping it around a few times. I intentionally put these other strips of tortoise um, shell, that um, that print, away from this main print because I wanted to have a little more color to help tie it in together, but I didn't want it to be too close. So I did go ahead and, um, and kind of spread that out a bit so that it's further away in every part. Um, I just love it. Okay, I love this. <laughs> I'm excited. I love it. Let's get some epoxy on it. On to epoxy. Like I said before, we have everything cleaned up. So depending on how this uh, layer goes, um, there's a chance that it could be the final layer. Um, I most likely will do another layer just because by putting this on, I can feel the, um, the thickness of the layered vinyl. And I definitely wanna make sure that has a really, really good a good coat on it actually as I smooth it out and I put a little more 
as you smooth the stuff out, the bubbles just work themselves out. I know I say that. Guys, I know I repeat myself a lot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I do these videos over the course of a few days, a lot of the times. And I don't quite realize I said something until I say it again. It's like I'm getting old already. We're going to make sure this is on here. All my edges are clean, so if there's a chance this could be a final coat, that is perfect. I won't have to do anything more. Look how pretty this is. This sticky sheet is definitely one of my favorites. I really, really love it. I'm going to have all the products I use listed and linked in the descriptions. Um, it is a Tortuga Bay sticky sheet pack. Um, I believe they sell individuals with that. I'm not completely sure. And then I will also list out all these glitters. Like I said, this gold is a custom mix. So uh, they don't quite have that gold, but I will put some ingredients down in the um, descriptions for that. And if you don't uh, have it or can't quite mix it up, then um, gold mine is super, super, super pretty. Gold mine is so pretty. Or even if you wanted to do, well, that cordial, how do you say that, cordelina? I think I said cordella. It might be Cordelina. I have I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry guys. That would be really really pretty too, but it's so close to the same cut as that. It might be a little different. Actually, there may be some thicker pieces. That would be pretty too. It just throws off a lot of like opal color, and I wouldn't want to take too much away from the gold. But gold mine and Easton would be another pretty one. Um, Easton isn't quite as gold as gold mine is. It's more of like a um, oh, how, how would I describe that? Not silver gold, but just not like doesn't have that much yellow gold to it. So making sure I don't have any bubbles in here. And I'm gonna treat the bottom as if this is my last coat of epoxy. So that means going around the top and making sure that's really good. And the bottom, you know, running my hand around and making sure that goes over the edge to reseal what we chopped off earlier. Taking my alcohol and my baby wipe, Put a good bit on there and just run your hand along the bottom to clean up anything that may have fallen over that edge. There we go. And then we're going to hit the bottom of that again with the torch or heat gun, whichever one is fine here. And that is just making sure that epoxy um, thins out just enough to give a softer edge on that bottom. And that is it, guys. I really hope you love this tutorial. Um, I definitely love this cup. Hope you guys do too. Please subscribe. Um, again, let me know if you have any questions or if there's any other sticky sheets or uh, anything that NOLA comes out with that you want to work with but you want to see it tested out first. Um, let me know. I'll go ahead and do a video based around it and see how I can help you guys out. So that's it. Hope you liked it and I'll see y'all soon.